Take your Bibles tonight, if you will, please, and turn to Psalm chapter 34. Psalm chapter 34. Now, we are not going to be in our series tonight. We, we've been camping out in Psalm 34 for weeks now. Um, but we're not, we're not going to be in that series. We, we'll probably be back in the series on Sunday. Uh, but tonight, I just want to preach to you for a few minutes, if I can. And uh, just something the Lord gave me that I want to share with you tonight. And I believe, I believe it'll be a help to you. I believe it'll be an encouragement to you. Uh, that's really the, the nature of this message this evening. I want to talk to you about this subject tonight, sharing the sparkle. Sharing the sparkle. And uh, that's a very odd title. I know it is. But I think once, I think once we're done with this, I think you'll, uh, you'll understand exactly what we're talking about tonight. How many of you are comfortable this evening? How many are comfortable? How many are too warm tonight? Anybody too warm this evening? Yeah. Everybody, all right, everybody's just right then? Okay, it feels a little warmer in here to me than it normally does, but, uh, but if, you're, if you're good, we'll leave it where it is for now. Psalm 34, when you find your place, let's all stand tonight out of respect for the reading of God's Word. We're going to read through the first five verses here, and then we'll pray and let you have a seat, and, uh, and, and we'll try to give you something from God's Word tonight. Psalm 34, verse 1, the psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord. Look what happened. And he heard me. And he it didn't just hear me, but look what happened. And delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. You may be seated tonight, and just for a few moments, I want to talk to you about that subject, sharing the sparkle. And I'm going to share a thought. Uh, The first part of the message is a thought that I shared with our church probably about uh, four or five years ago. Uh, But just as I was going back over that thought this week, God began to really work in my heart. And and just something that I want to share with the church tonight, and I hope it will be a help to you. I believe it will be. Let's pray. Father, we love you, and thank you so much for the privilege to be back in your house again tonight. Lord, thank you for the wonderful music. Thank you for the great fellowship, the testimonies. Uh, Lord, we just appreciate so much the opportunity to be here tonight. And uh, Lord, Miss Jeanette is right. Uh, Lord, what a privilege. And uh, Lord, we, we don't, uh, it's not drudgery. We're not obligated to come. Father, we're, we're so thankful that when it's church time, we look forward to being here and uh, God, we need you to be here, though. And I, I pray that the presence of the Holy One would, would be here this evening. And Lord, I pray that you would help us. I know our folks have worked a long, hard day. Uh, for some, it's been a grueling day. For some, it's been a trying day. And uh, But Lord, I pray that right now we would, uh, as Brother Raphael said, I pray that we would just tune all that out. I pray we'd turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. And Father, I pray that you'd help the Word of God to come alive in our hearts and our lives this evening. And I pray all that's done would would honor Christ and glorify Christ tonight. Fill us with the Spirit of God, please. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake and all God's people said, amen. Look again at your scripture, and we're going to turn away from Psalm 34 uh, a little bit tonight. But if you'd do do me a favor and make, make sure that you keep your bookmark there or your ribbon there, because we're going to go back a number of times to Psalm chapter 34. But look, if you will, at verse number 5. Psalm 34 and verse number 5. The Bible says they looked unto him and were, what's the word? Lightened. They looked unto him and were lightened. And their face, their faces were not ashamed. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. At first glance, when you read Psalm 34 and verse number 5, you believe that it is referencing the Lord. Now, that's what it sounds like, that they were looking to the Lord, and the Lord lightened them. And now, I do believe this. I believe that Psalm 34 is definitely a picture of Christ. We know the whole theme of the Bible is is the Lord. Uh, And I'll show you that here in just a few moments. But actually, in its context, in its context, Psalm 34, verse number 5, is actually speaking about David. Now, let me, give you the, let me give you the background behind Psalm 34, and maybe this will help you to understand a little bit more of what we're talking about tonight. In Psalm chapter 34, David 
is fleeing from a, a jealous King Saul. He's just come from King Achish. And, uh, but again, the idea being that he's, he's running from Saul. Saul is filled with jealousy and rage. And he wants to kill David. He wants to take David's life. He's already done that several times. Already tried to take David's life several times. And so David is, at, uh, at Psalm 34, David is now uh, held up in a cave, probably the cave of Adullam. And, uh, and he's in this cave for shelter, uh, shelter and survival. Uh, but, but we find something happening here. We find that many of David's family and some of what we would refer to as the outcast of Israel are finding out where David is. And they come to David because they're seeking David's leadership. They love David. They trust David. And they're seeking David's leadership and his direction uh, in their life. Now, again, holding your place at Psalm 34, let me show that to you if I could. Turn over to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 22. 1 Samuel 22. And look, if you will, at verse number 1. And, and so 1 Samuel 22 is really synonymous with, with Psalm 34. And it gives us an idea of the background and what's going on behind Psalm 34 when David wrote this psalm. And so 1 Samuel chapter 22 and look at verse number one. The Bible says, David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And look at this. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. Look at verse two. And everyone that was in distress and everyone that was in debt and everyone that was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became a captain over them and there were with him about 400 men. Now, we're not exactly sure how many women and children were there, but there's a crowd. I mean, there's a crowd that has gathered here. And, uh, and this crowd that I'm talking about tonight is a crowd whose light has gone out. They too are suffering from, from uh, Saul's godless reign. And Saul is just sort of off the rails now. And, uh, and uh, we would call it off the chain. He's turned his back on the Lord pretty much. And, uh, and, and these folks uh, you know, are, are seeking asylum. They're seeking shelter from King Saul's reign, but they're at the bottom. Most of these people that uh, we read about tonight, have, their property is probably gone. Uh, they're distressed. The Bible says they're heavily in debt. And uh, basically what our Bible's telling us is this, that these people are feeling like the world is sort of closing in on them. Now, again, think about this. They've lost their home. They don't have the comfort, the warm comfort of a home or a soft bed to sleep in. Uh, now they're, you know, they're seeking shelter in a, 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 probably a dark, damp cave. Uh, and so basically the Bible is teaching us here in Psalm 34 that these outcasts, these downcasts, uh, begin looking unto David for encouragement but this is the point of the message tonight. As they look to David for encouragement, you know what? They find it. They find it. They're needing somebody that's going to lift them up. They're needing somebody. I mean, these folks are feeling low. I mean, they are low. They feel like they're at the end of the rope, and they're needing somebody that they know is going to pour into their life and somebody that's going to encourage them. And, brother, they find that, that somebody in David. Now, turn back over to Psalm 34 and look, look again at verse number five. The Bible says in verse number five, Psalm 34, verse number five, they looked unto him, David, they looked unto him and were lightened. I looked up that word, lightened. It's the Hebrew word nahar. And you know what it means? It means to sparkle, to sparkle. It means to be cheerful. In other words, you could read it like this. They looked unto him, and you know what? The sparkle came back. They looked unto him, and they were encouraged. They looked unto him, and they were lifted up. I mean, these folks were really, really down, and yet they looked unto him, and, and the sparkle returned. Look what it says here. And their faces were not ashamed. The word ashamed, there's the idea of disappointment and, and blushing, and these folks are embarrassed. These folks are, you know, they're just... Uh, they're at a low point in their life, and some of them have nothing to go back to. And, and uh, you know, think about it like this. Uh, some of these men probably worked all their life for their belongings and their homes and their property and, and all these things. And, and now all that's been taken from them by a wicked king, and, uh, and they're disappointed, and they're embarrassed. And yet the Bible t is telling us this, that when they came to David, when they looked to David, they got the sparkle back. When they looked to David, they were no longer 
embarrassed. When they looked at David, they were no longer blushing because of the plight that they were in. There was something about David that, that encouraged these folks greatly in the Lord. Now, church, uh, you say, preacher, I really think that's a picture of Jesus. Well, I do too. There's no, no, no doubt about that. Uh, it is a picture of Christ. In fact, listen to Isaiah 26, 3. The Bible says, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. And I thought about Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says, in the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I thought about Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 where the Bible says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so, yes, I, I, no, no debate about that, no argument about that. I believe that this is without a doubt a picture of Jesus. I believe it's a picture of the Lord. And I'm glad that, you know what, if you know Jesus and if you'll get to Jesus, you can get your sparkle back. Amen. And, uh, but, but this is what I'm interested in. What was it in David's life? What was it in David's life that caused these people to be encouraged? What was it in David's life that caused these folks to get the, the light back, to get the sparkle back, to get the joy and the smile and the shout and the cheerfulness back? What, what was it that, that was such an encouragement? You know, and I, here's the thing. Here's what I believe. I believe if we can find out what it is, we can do the same thing. And I believe that we can help some other folks to get their sparkle back. And so, again, this is simple, simple. You know that's the only kind of preaching I do. But, but how did David help them get their sparkle back? Number one, number one, we notice this, that David remained consistent. David remained consistent. Look at Psalm 34. Look at verse number one. The psalmist said here, I will bless the Lord. Would you read the next three words with me? Ready? At all times. Somebody says, wait a minute, David. Do you know where you're at? David said, oh, yeah, I know where I'm at. David, you understand, don't you? You're no longer in the palace. David said, oh, I understand that. David, you understand that, that you've been ripped out of the kingdom, that, you, that you're being chased by Saul. Uh, you understand that you're innocent, and yet you've been made out to be a criminal. And, and David said, yes, I, I understand that. And somebody said, well, David, what are you going to do? David said, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord. And somebody says, well, David, why are you going to praise the Lord? David said, because that's what I've always done. And that's what I'm always going to do. And David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. But look at the last part. His praise shall, what's the next word? What's the next word? His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know what David is saying here? Things are not ideal. Things are not like I wish they were. I mean, everything's not hunky-dory. I mean, here I am. I'm, I'm in a cave. I'm running for my life. And now I've got who knows how many people, at least 400 men, no telling how many women and children. And David said, now I've got all these other people there looking at me uh, for help and sustenance and provision and protection. And, uh, and somebody said, David, what are you going to do? David said, I'm going to praise the Lord. I'm going to praise the Lord. And we notice here that David remained consistent. Did you know it's a, a huge encouragement when you see people who are consistent? Just consistent. Now, you say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about anything. Just consistent. I'm talking about people that are consistent in their job. Folks, you just show up to the job. You say, Pastor, I'll tell you what, sometimes my job, sometimes my job is uh, troublesome. Well, that's why they call it a job. Amen. I mean, seriously, church, really, seriously. That's why they call it a job. I mean, some days are, 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 are grand and other days are, are bland. I mean, they're, they're, you know, it's just, that's just the way a job is. But boy, thank God for those folks that just show up. Thank God for those folks that are consistent. Thank God for the people that show up to their job when it's sunshiny, but they show up to their job when it's rainy. And thank God for those folks that show up to their job when they feel great. But thank God for those folks that show up to their job when they don't feel great. I'm talking about just being consistent, just consistent in, in, in life, consistent in their job, consistent in their marriage. Man, you know what a blessing it is when we I do happy anniversary here on Wednesday night, and a couple will stand up and we'll say, how many years have you been married? Preacher, we've been married 50 years. Preacher, been married 60 years. My mom and dad were great examples. 68 years they were married when mom went to heaven. 
And uh, you know what? Just consistent. Just consistent. And by the way, we're, we're seeing such a lack of that in the younger generation nowadays. And it's just like the, the first little hump that you, that you hit, you know, you, you bail out. No, don't bail out. Hang in there. Man, hang in there. And just be consistent in your marriage. Be consistent in your family. Be consistent in your church attendance. Be consistent in your ministry. That's what I'm saying. That when you find people, and you know what I'm telling you is true. When you find people that are consistent, it encourages you. Consistent. I thought about this. How about consistent in their mood? Consistent in their mood. Good night. What in the world's going on nowadays? Is the whole world bipolar? I mean, what's going on? I mean, it's like you never know anymore. You never know if somebody's going to say, God bless you or curse you out. I, you never know. I'm talking about the same person, you know. And what's really bad is one day they do curse you out, and the next day they, they, you know, they bless you in the name of the Lord. Let me bless you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> well, you sure didn't bless me in the name of the Lord yesterday. I, I promise you that. Man, just consistent. And you know what I'm talking about. You all know people, and I do too, and uh, they are so up and down and, uh, and all around. And one day they're, ha- uh, they're glad. One day they're sad. One day they're happy. One day they're discouraged. I mean, just you never know where they're going to be, what they're going to be doing, how they're going to be. Man, you know what? Do you know what a blessing it is when you meet somebody and they are just consistent? People say, you know what, man, that guy, he's just happy all the time. Hallelujah, man. And by the way, those folks that are like that, a lot of times people say, you know what, he don't ever have any problems. Come on. Are you kidding? Be kind to everybody because everybody's having a tough time. You know what, everybody's got problems. Everybody's got problems, church. Everybody's got trials. Everybody's got struggles. Everybody's facing something that you're not facing and you're facing something somebody else is not facing. And yet there are some people in this world who have just decided, you know what, even though I'm, I'm hitting a, a brick wall right now, I'm just going to be consistent. I'm just going to praise the Lord. That's what David is saying. Consistent things encourage. Things that are consistent encourage. A car motor that just runs when you need it to run. That's an encouragement. You say, well, it ain't a Cadillac. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a Ford Pinto, if it's, if it's consistent. Is that right? You say, preacher, it's got 300,000 miles on it. Does it get you back and forth to work? It does. Praise God. Amen. I mean, you don't have to worry about it. Just get in it. Takes you to work. Brings you home. Takes you to the grocery store. It may not look like much. I mean, it may have some rust spots on it, and, uh, uh, and, and maybe the sunroof don't work anymore, uh, or maybe it's got so much rust that there's an automatic sunroof. I don't know, I, but I'm just saying, hey, it's just consistent. And uh, you know what? Just the consistency of that, of that vehicle is an encouragement. I thought about this power that runs through your house. That's consistent. That's an encouragement. And you know what I'm talking about? If you've ever lost power for several days, Boy, that's a bummer. I mean, that's a bummer. When you got to burn candles and use flashlights and, uh, and you, you, you can't run your appliances, you can't run the stove, and, and you're eating beanie weenies. Is anybody with me tonight? And, 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 and you walk through the house thinking, oh, man, I hope the power comes back on today. Can't run the air conditioner. Man, I hope the power comes back on. Oh, mercy, I hope they get out of here today. Hope they get the power on. And all of a sudden, one day, you're walking through the house with the flashlight, and boom, the power comes back on. And you're like, whoa, glory. Hey, you know what? It's an encouragement. You know why? Because things that are consistent are an encouragement. Hey, a friend that is consistently by your side is an encouragement. I'm talking about a friend that's there through thick and thin. I'm talking about a friend that's with you in the good days, with you in the bad days. Now, again, you know what? We can't preach this without reminding us that this is without a doubt a picture of Jesus. I mean, that's exactly what it is. You know why? Because there's one thing about Jesus. He is always, without fail, consistent. (laughs) Oh, yes, good neighbor. Listen to James chapter 1, verse 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. You know what I, y'all don't get mad at me. Don't take this wrong. I wish they'd just leave the time alone. 
why don't they just leave the time alone? Leave it like it is right now. I can get a lot more done if you just leave it like it is. And, uh, but we're going to have to change our clocks this Sunday. And uh, constantly changing, changing with the seasons. Did you know that's exactly what James chapter 1, verse 17 is teaching about Jesus? That he doesn't change. He doesn't change like the planetary systems. He doesn't change like the rotations and the movements of the planets. He doesn't change like the seasons that the Lord Jesus Christ has no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, Jesus said, For I am the Lord, I change not. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. Consistent. Man, that's why he's such a great Savior. He's consistent. He's consistent. That's why he encourages you because you know what? Every day when you go to him, you know he's going to be there. Don't you, don't you hate it when you have to call these automated things? And they're like, dial one if you want so-and-so, dial two if you want so-and-so. You know, and, and, boy, aren't you glad you never get an automated system when you call him? Amen. He's always there. He's always on the line. And uh, one of the things that we noticed, the reason they got their sparkle back, no wonder they got their sparkle back. Because they were with a guy that was just consistent. And he said, I'm going to praise the Lord. I don't know what the rest of y'all are going to do. Y'all may sulk and, and, and go on. I'm just telling you, in the good times, I'm going to praise him. In the bad times, I'm going to praise him. I'm just going to praise him continually. And David didn't let the seasons of life and the hardships and the turmoil and the problems, he didn't let it sway in one way or the other. David just, just, just held it steady. And David said, you know what? There's coming a better day. And until that better day gets here, I'm just going to praise the Lord. And so David remained consistent. Number two, I notice here that David remembered the importance of words. Now, I know we've been talking about this a lot here, here recently, but but I, we're going to talk about it a little bit more tonight. What was it that David did that brought the sparkle back in these people's lives? Number one, David remained consistent. Number two, David remembered the importance of words. You know what I, you know what I believe? Now think about it. Here's 400 people and wives and children who have pretty much had to flee for their lives from the kingdom. They've got word somehow or another. They've got you know, they, they've got word that David is held up in a cave, and so they have to do all this under the radar. And so they just, you know, gather up as many belongings as they can, and they've got their wives and their kids, and they, and they come to the cave of Adullam there where David is. And I'm sure, don't, don't you know, I mean, these people were people just like us. Don't you know they were, there were some that at least were complaining? Don't you know there were some who were cursing Saul and say, you know what, if Saul never would have got elected, we'd be in a lot better shape. And man, they're just complaining and they're murmuring and they're, they're murmuring because they've lost this and they're complaining because they lost that. And one of the things that we notice here in Psalm 34 is that David encourages them to be careful with their words. Look at Psalm 34, verse 13. In the midst of all of this, David says to them, keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Hey, church, our words are important when it comes to encouraging others. But I'm going to go a step further than that. Our words are important when it comes to encouraging ourselves. Did you know if we're not careful, we'll talk ourselves into depression? When God wants us to have victory, God doesn't want his children depressed, discouraged. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I didn't come here and pick on anybody. I came here and try to lift you up. But I'm just telling you this. God doesn't want you tripping over your bottom lip. God doesn't want you having pity parties. And by the way, nobody ever shows up to those except you and the devil. That's the only ones that ever show up to those. And God doesn't want you like that. God wants you. I'm telling you, I'm going to show you this in just a moment. God wants you, if you're here tonight and you're a born again child of God and your name is written in heaven, God wants you and me to live a life of victory. Amen. Amen. I want to show it to you. Take, hold your place at Psalm 34. But I want you to turn over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter number 8, and look at verse number 35. Romans chapter 8, verse number 35. Man, this is so good right here. 
Romans 8, verse 35, evidently there were some people who were feeling it in Paul's ministry. And Paul writes, writes to these Roman Christians under the inspiration of the Spirit of God. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 35, Paul says there, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Paul says, what do you got going on in your life? What is it that you're facing right now? Are you facing some of these things? Are you facing problems? Are you facing opposition? Look what it says in verse 36. As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed. We are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Look at verse 37. I love it. I've got it, I've got it emboldened, got it highlighted. I've got the first word underlined. In verse number 37, Paul said, nay, <laughs> that'd, be our, that'd be our union grove, no. He says, nay, we're, we're not pulled down by tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. He said, oh, no, 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 no. He said, we're not discouraged. We're not defeated. Are you listening to me, Calvary? He said, we're not, we're not on our last leg. We're not getting ready to, to lose. We're not, on the, we're not on the defeated side. He says, nay, nay. He said, in all these things, in all these things, in tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword, nay, in all these things, he said, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Hey, Calvary Baptist Church, I came here tonight to tell you that you're on the winning side tonight. Amen. I don't know who I'm preaching to. I don't know who this message is for, but maybe there's somebody and you walked in here tonight and you felt like you're, I mean, you felt like, man, this is it. You felt like you can't go any further and I came here to tell you, hey, it's time to get your sparkle back. It's time to get your encouragement back. It's time to get your joy back on. It's time to get your praise back on. Why? I'll tell you why. Because you are on the winning side. That's why. You say, I know, preacher, but I'm, I'm biting my fingernails down to the quick, and I'm, I'm taking Xanax and nerve pills, and I mean, I'm so scared about this election. Church, let me tell you something. It don't matter who gets into the White House in, in the next little bit. Hey, I'm telling you, everything's all right in my father's house. God's not in heaven pacing back and forth, and oh my, oh my, oh my, what's going to happen? He knows exactly what's going to happen. And he's going to take care of you. Take your Bibles, if you will, turn to Isaiah 54. God wants us to live in victory. God wants you to be on top side. You say, Pastor, I'm, I'm facing some things right now. I, I, I get that. And I'm not belittling that in any way. But I am telling you this, even in the valley, God is good. And God wants you to live in victory. You can't lose. In fact, look what the Lord tells us in Isaiah 54 and verse 17. <laughs> look at this, church. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Hey, church, I just want you to understand something. You're on the winning side tonight. And so when you're going through the fire, when you're going through the valley, when you're going through the storm, be careful what you say. Be careful how you use your words. That's what David is telling these people. They're saying, woe is me. I mean, nobody knows the troubles we, I mean, and, and David says, hey, 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 hey. Be careful about the words you use. Be careful you don't let negative words come out of your, out of your mouth. Why? I'll tell you why. Because your mouth, listen to this now, church. This is going to help you tonight. Your mouth influences your mind. Your mouth influences your mind. By the way, it influences other minds too. Did you know there are some people you don't want to be around? You actually avoid them. When you see them coming, you go the other way. You know why? Because they, they not only don't have a sparkle, they'll take yours. Am I preaching it right tonight? Yeah. And by the way, you're right. You're right to avoid them. 
Now, be kind, be Christ-like. But if you know somebody's going to take your sparkle away, you have to be careful that, you, that you, you, you stay away from them because your mouth will influence your mind. You say, preacher, I wish you'd get back to preaching the Bible. Brother, I am preaching the Bible tonight. In fact, I want you to take your Bibles tonight and turn to Proverbs chapter 16. And look at verse number 24. Be careful what you say because your mouth will influence your mind. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 24 Wow, look what the Bible says. Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words. Proverbs 16, 24, pleasant words. What kind of words? Pleasant words are as an, as a what? Honeycomb. Brother Willow used to call, he used to call that heavenly chewing gum. Yeah, I like, I like it. I love honeycomb, by the way. I'm not talking about the cereal. I'm talking about honeycomb, amen? I like it. Now, that's, I know that's a little more old-fashioned, but, man, I, I love to chew some honeycomb. It's good. And he says, pleasant words are as in honeycomb. Look what he says here. Sweet to the what? Sweet to the soul. That's your innermost being. That's your inner man. Sweet to the soul and, and what did he say? Health to the what? Health to the bones. And so our mouth will influence our mind. Proverbs 15, 1 says it like this, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat their fruit thereof. Hey, Calvary, let's make sure we work at staying positive in our speech. Now, I'm not, uh, well, listen, you say what you want to say. I don't care. I'm just telling you that, you know what, we'll stay positive in our speech. And you, and you know what? You can call me what you want to call me. Preachers can label me whatever they want to label. You know what? I'm, well, I'm way over that nowadays, and so uh, I don't worry about all that stuff anymore. And, uh, but I'm just telling you, your words are going to influence your mind. And we're to be positive in our speech. Listen to Psalm 107, verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> Whom is redeemed from the hand of the enemy. We used to sing that little song. Oh, be careful, little mouth. What you say. Well, be careful, little mouth, what you say. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little mouth, what you say. Be careful what you say. I don't know if anybody else is watching the World Series. My wife and I, we've been watching the World Series. A little boy loved baseball. And he was didn't have any friends over that day. He was in the backyard. And he had his bat, his ball, and uh, he was trying to hit some balls. And somebody pitched to him, so he just he had his bat in one hand, his ball in the other. He'd throw the ball up, and he'd whew, and he missed it. Strike one. I mean, ball hit right there in the ground. He said, "I'll get you next time. I'll get you next time." He reached down, got that ball. I mean, he's going to time it just right. Threw that ball up. Kept his eyes on the kept his eyes on the ball. Whoo! Boom, ball hit right there in the floor. Dog, I'll, I'll get you next time. I'll get you next time. And reached down, picked up that ball third time. You know what? Picked that ball and he threw it up. I mean, it came down, came down, came down, came down, came down. And I mean, man, he swung with all of his might. And the ball hit the dirt right there. He took that bat and threw it down. And he said, wow, what a pitcher, what a pitcher, what a pitcher. Hey. Man, listen, just stay positive with your words. Just praise the Lord. Amen. No wonder, man, no wonder these folks got their sparkle back. David remained consistent. David remembered the importance of words. But this is where I want to get to, and we're done. This is where I want to get to. Number three, we notice here that David rested in the goodness of the Lord. Come on now, church. Hang in, hang in here with me just for a few more moments. David rested in the goodness of the Lord. What was it about David that, that caused these people to get their sparkle back? David rested in the goodness of the Lord. Listen, as you read Psalm 34, one of the things you pick up on is that David had an amazing confidence in his God. Look at it. Look at it. Psalm 34. Look at verse 3. <laughs> David's just full, man. He's just full. He says in verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And he, he doesn't say magnify. He says, oh, magnify. Oh, the, you know what? That's different than magnify. That's different. 
You know, it's different when you say, the Lord is good, and then you say, oh, the Lord is good. That's different. Are you with me? That's different. And he says, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Look at verse 6. David's just bragging on the Lord. He says, this poor man cried. He's talking about himself. This poor man cried, and, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. And, man, he doesn't just camp around you. Look what he does. And delivereth them. Look at verse 22. He says, the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. You know what we find here? David was secure in the Lord. Man, he was confident in God. And you know what? When you're around somebody like that, you know what happens? It encourages you. No wonder they got their sparkle back. No wonder they got that joy back. No wonder they were lightened. Because David encouraged them in the Lord. David had, a, had, David had such a confidence in the Lord that he didn't care what others said. In fact, look at this church. We're almost done, but man, don't dare go to sleep now, whatever you do. David was so passionate. I love this. David was so passionate about the Lord. He throws out a challenge to those around him. He says, man, magnify the Lord. I'm telling you, I cried unto him and he delivered me. He's going to take care of you. That's what he's saying. He's going to take care of you. Here's all these people that have been dis displaced from their homes and their families and their belongings and they're down and they're discouraged. And David says, hey, I want to tell you something. God's going to take care of you. And then he throws out a challenge. You say, a challenge? What are you talking about, preacher? <laughs> Look at verse 8. Come on now. David says in verse 8, oh, there's that oh again. That's different. David says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. You know what David says to this discouraged crowd? He says, if you ever really taste of him, come on now, church, I'm telling you. He said, if you ever really taste of him, if you ever really taste of him, you know what? People are going to know it. If you ever really taste of him, you, you won't care what others do. You won't care what others say. You won't care what the doubters do. You won't care if others quit on Jesus. If you ever get a taste of him, if you ever really taste and see that the Lord is good, you know what will happen? You keep on going. Oh, yes. Taste, oh, taste and see. Hey, church, let me tell you something. I have tasted the Dulce de, de la Chez cheesecake at, at Cheesecake Factory. I've tasted it. No, you don't understand what I'm saying. I've tasted it. They brought it out. And it looked wonderful. They didn't put one dollop of, of uh, whipped cream. They put two. And then they drizzled it with caramel. And they put uh, these glazed almonds all over the top and all over the side of the plate. Dulce de leche, cheesecake. I've tasted it. You see, because I've tasted it, it don't really matter what you say. You can say, I don't believe it's that good. Have at it. That's okay. <laughs> That's all right. And uh, I'm telling you one thing, it ain't good, it ain't good. I'm telling you, it ain't good. It ain't good, it ain't good. And uh, hey, just go ahead and make your little jingle and sing it and say it and all you want to. But I'm just telling you what, you ain't going to convince me. And I'll tell you why, because good friend, I tasted it, amen. I tasted it for myself. I know how good it is. Hey, I know it's sweet to the taste. And I'm glad I can come here tonight and tell you, I've tasted of the Lord. I know how good he is. And so we won't debate over it tonight. We're done. Almost. <laughs> Take your Bible, turn to 1 John. This is going to help somebody. 1 John chapter 5. <laughs> Come on now, I'm about to shout myself. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 10. Oh, man. 1 John chapter 5, verse number 10. Found your place, say amen. amen. 
Look at this. Look at this, Calvary. 1 John 5, verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness. What's the next two words? Let's say it again. What's the next two words? He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. You know what the Bible's teaching us there? When you really taste of the goodness of the Lord, you'll have the witness in you. You'll have the witness in you. You see, I have been to Krispy Kreme. I'm just telling you, been there. Got the mug to prove it. I mean, I've been there. And uh, I've been there. And, uh, and many of my brothers and sisters in Christ have joined me there. I, and I've uh, been there. I've been there. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I'm not going to tell you that, I, that, I, that when I was there that I've always behaved myself like I should. I'm not going to tell you that at all. Sometimes I ordered a whole dozen when I should have got two donuts. But when that hot and ready sign came on, I was, yeah. <laughs> It said hot and ready. I said, yeah, I'm ready. I'm hot and I'm ready. Amen. And I, and, uh, I said, just give me a whole dozen. I mean, just give me a whole dozen. <laughs> and I, I know I shouldn't have done it. I know I, sh- I know. I, listen, I know I shouldn't have. I'm, I'm confessing. Confession's good for the soul. I'm lactose intolerant. And yet we'll go by Walmart and I'll tell my wife, I said, give me some of that red cap milk. <laughs> give me some of that red cap milk. We're going to take it home, put it in the refrigerator, let it get really, really cold. Really, really cold. And then I'm going to get me a glass, not a cup, not a cup, a glass. I'm going to get me a tall glass out of the cupboard. I'm going I'm to fill that glass up with that red cap milk. And, brother, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm telling you how to do it, church. I'm trying to help you tonight. I'm going to reach in that, that uh, Krispy Kreme box, and I'm going to pull one of those Krispy Kreme donuts out. And what you do is you take a bite. You take a bite. And then after you've taken a bite, you baptize the rest of that. You baptize it. You baptize it in that, in that milk. And then just let it run down the side of your mouth. And, and uh, oh, hallelujah, brother. I'm, I'm about to speak in tongues tonight right now. I tell you. And, uh, hey, I'm telling you something. I'm telling you something, Calvary. I've tasted it. I've tasted it. People say, well, I'll tell you one thing. That Krispy Kreme place, it ain't good. Go ahead. Say that all you want to. You say, how do you feel about it? Oh, it's good. It's good. Man, it's so good. You say, how do you know? I tasted it. I tasted it. There might even be some people who say, I don't believe in Krispy Kreme. I don't believe that. Believe that for a second. I don't even believe Krispy Kreme exists. I don't believe that. You see, I'm a realist. I'm a realist. Everything's relative, you know. I don't even believe Krispy Kreme exists. And you know what? That doesn't bother me a bit. Doesn't bother me a bit. You know why? I've tasted it. I've tasted it. And 42 years ago, when I was under conviction of the Holy Ghost of God, a oh, man, oh man, and I knew I was on my way to hell. I knew I was on my way to hell. And God showed me my desperation. He showed me my need. He showed me that I was lost. And I could not save myself. And I walked into a little back room, pastor's office slash Sunday school office, and my godly pastor is in heaven tonight, took his red Schofield Bible out and walked me down the Romans road. And by faith, I called out to him and I asked him to save my soul. And I want to tell you, I tasted him, amen. I tasted him, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You cannot lose. Doesn't matter what you're going through tonight. You cannot lose. You're on the winning side. If God is your father, Jesus is your savior, heaven is your home. You cannot lose. Thank God I'm on the winning side tonight. Abel, let's change it up tonight. Let's don't do what we talked about doing. Let's do I'm on the winning side tonight. I'm on the winning side. 
Will you bow your heads with me tonight? Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. There may be somebody here tonight, you're discouraged. There may be somebody here tonight, you're facing, you're facing tribulation, distress, persecution, trials, valleys. You may be here tonight, you're, you're facing physical ailments, afflictions, disease, financial problems. And you say, preacher, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it another day. Hey, I want to tell you something. You're on the winning side tonight. Get your sparkle back. Get your praise back on. Amen. Get your sparkle back tonight. In just a moment, we're going to stand. And if you're here this evening and the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, I'm going to listen. Why don't you just come? Just get on this altar tonight and say, Oh, God, give me my sparkle back. And, Lord, give it back to me with a vengeance. Father, I thank you for this time we've had together tonight. Lord, no wonder those folks got lightened. No wonder they got encouraged. God, we thank you for what you've taught us tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll bless in this invitation. I pray that you'll speak to hearts. And Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Why don't we stand tonight? Our heads are bowed. Our eyes are closed. If you're here tonight and you need prayer, if you need prayer, some of our personal workers are going to be in the altars. And they would love to pray. They'd love to pray with you right now. If you're discouraged, if you're uh, feeling low, uh, there's a battle in your life, a struggle in your life, and uh, you just need somebody to pray with you, I want to encourage you to come. While we wait, you come, and they're going to pray. They're going to pray. So, Father, have your way, please. And we sure thank you in Jesus' name. If you're here tonight, you need to be saved. Now's a good time to come. We would love to take the Bible and show you how to be saved. And so while we pause just for a moment, if you need to come, the altars are open. Come on up here if you will. You can look up this way tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Rafi if he'll come. You know how to lead this song, don't you, buddy? We're going to sing this first verse. How many verses does it have, Brother Abel? Does it have two? Is it two verses? Three verses. Let's do the first and the last. Can we? Can y'all manage that back there, guys? So we're going to sing this first verse, and then we're going to go back, and we're going to sing that last verse. And uh, while we do this, while we sing this tonight as we close the service, man, just, just praise Him. Just praise Him. Thank God you're on the winning side. Amen. By the way, church, can I just remind us, tonight might be the night. Jesus may come tonight. And, uh, well, wouldn't that be great if He does? Amen. Brother Wife, come lead us. Come lead us if you will. Once I drifted out and sinned,
Man, y'all were singing that like you had victory tonight. Man, I'm glad I was in my place tonight. You can have a seat just for a moment, all right? I promise you we won't be long with the uh, announcements. Hey, listen, I forgot to mention Miss Debbie. And Miss Debbie had uh, a catheter, heart catheterization yesterday. And so, uh, anyway, remember Miss Debbie and your prayers. They're going to try to um, take care of her situation with, with medication. But she does have some things that we need to pray about. And so just remember Miss Debbie, if you will, and, and uh, pray that she'll get feeling better and get her strength back and be able to get back in here really, really soon. Pray for us that we'll be preaching over Southview tomorrow. And then I just thought I'd mention this. On Monday, we're going to be preaching over at Victory Bible Baptist Church. And the pastor has asked me to come and, and uh, preach. They're going to have an um, election prayer meeting. And he's asked me to come and preach before that. And I think I'm going to preach on how the Christian should vote that night. And, uh, but anyway, I just thought I'd let you know about that. And you pray. Pray for that special meeting that the Lord would bless in that. So don't forget, Multiply is coming up just around the corner, and, uh, and so many of you have signed up, and I, I'm so glad about that. I appreciate you signing up. This is going to be a great day for our workers, and uh, most of you know, if you've been here at Calvary a little while, for a number of years, we did the, what we call the leadership event, and we would come on a Saturday, we'd get our leaders together, and we'd just, you know, have some teaching time and fellowship time, and this sort of evolved out of that, and so... Anyway, I hope you'll be here for the Multiply Conference. Be praying for that, if you will. If you can help with food that day, we're going to feed every, everybody. We're going to feed them two meals that day. We're going to feed breakfast that morning, and then we'll feed lunch later that day. And we still need just a few things filled up. And so if you'll see Miss Mary Thomas after the service tonight, and if you can help with that, we would, man, we would appreciate that so much. And so be sure that you uh, take advantage of that, if you will. Then don't forget Men's Day this coming Sunday, and we're going to be doing some special for all of our men, all of our men, and then for one of our men who brings the most visitors. Now, we'll count Sunday morning and Sunday night, but for the man, one of our men who brings the most visitors, we have a beautiful Schuyler Bible that we're going to give him, and uh, I preached from a Schuyler tonight, and uh, these are beautiful Bibles, and so uh, anyway, this, this is a wonderful thing to add to your, your uh, library. And so if you'd like to win this, man, get with it. Get with it and bring, bring some visitors on Sunday, and we'll give that, uh, we'll give that away. I'm going to let Brother Brandon come and finish this up tonight. Let me just ask the church, church, if you would mind, can I ask a favor? Would that be all right? And uh, you, you, were so, uh, you were such a blessing for pastor appreciation, and we appreciate everything you did. I mean that. And then all the cards and just the kindnesses, my goodness, that were shown. We appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. I know I speak for the staff as well. We, we really appreciate everything that was directed our way. With the church's blessing, I would like to do this, and we can just make this toward pastor appreciation if, if the church is okay with this. I'd like, and I don't even know if we're going to be able to make it happen now, but I'd like to go, and I'd like to get matching suits for all the staff guys for Multiply Conference. And, uh, and so we're going to probably go to a place where we might be able to get one suit and then get the other one half off or, or two for one or something like that, uh, I, I promise we'll do our best to be very, very uh, uh, frugal. And, uh, but is that okay with the church if we did that? If we did that, all right. And so I appreciate, I appreciate that very much. And so anyway, Brandon, you come, and we'll let you finish this up tonight. Uh, make sure they're back here by the 17th. There's still more on the back table there. So if you need those on your way out, and this is a good, good chance for you to get your kids involved too. Let them help pack those boxes and, and let them know what's going to happen, what's taking place there. It'll be a good opportunity for, to let them know that they're sharing the gospel, not only here locally, but spreading it out all across uh, the world there. Veterans Day, don't forget about that. So we have Men's Sunday this coming Sunday, following right up behind that. On November the 10th, we'll have Veterans Day. We're honoring all those who served. Uh, so make sure you invite your loved ones, anyone who served in the, any branch 
to the military. We want to honor them that day uh, and also honoring all of, ours, all of our faithful members who are already serving. You're faithfully already here. Uh, but that's going to be a special day. It's going to be a big day. Uh, also, let me make mention this. If you're part of the choir on that November the 10th, wear something patriotic. I'm sure you've already kind of planned that out. We're not necessarily wearing specifics, uh, but for all of our choir, if you could wear something patriotic, that'll be wonderful as well. Uh, and then don't forget, uh, as Pastor already made mention about the time change, all right? Uh, so you gain a little bit of time. You, we are going to change the time, unfortunately. Amen. Uh, we're going to lose a little bit of that daylight, but you're going to gain an hour of sleep, all right? Uh, so you don't stay up later, okay? Just because you're gaining an extra hour don't mean you get to stay up later, all right? Get to bed that extra hour early and enjoy it, amen? God's going to give it to you. Enjoy it, all right? Redeem that time wisely, all right? Let's all stand to our feet. We're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer this evening. Thank you so much for being here. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for allowing us to be here. God, we thank you for the great message that we've heard. Now, Lord, help us as we depart, Lord. May we meditate on the message, and Lord, may we take the sparkle that we have and share that with others. Lord, may it be a contagious sparkle, one that, well, one that when others look at us, they see something different about us, and and they inquire about that. And then we get a chance to share them, uh, share with them the joy and the hope that we have within us. And God, I pray, Lord, that we would just depart from here. Lord, changed, encouraged, help tonight. And God, help us to encourage one another. Many who are not here, sick and afflicted, or many other situations going on, may we reach out to them and be an encouragement unto them this week. And Lord, we ask that you'd watch over us, keep us safe as we all go home. We thank you, Lord, for home to go safely too. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives. Look forward to what you're going to do in each one of our lives. Lives. And we pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. And all God's people said, Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.